Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Anthony Moore for Your Money More. And we are going to talk about racist white folks. However, we do deep dives over here. We do critical thought over here. We do going beneath the surface over here. So what we are going to get into is the modern day evolution of racism, specifically against those of us who have descended from U.S. chattel slaves. In other words, those of us who have descended from freedmen because the freedmen were the free slaves after the Civil War. And so what we have to understand is that the racism against us has evolved. It's to a large, uh, to a large extent. It's no longer about that burn a cross on your lawn, hang you from a tree while wearing white sheets, Confederate flag waving, colors only whites, only water fountain and everything else, separate but seriously unequal anti-black in your face racism that has been pervasive in this country for much of the existence of this country, for much of the 400 years since we were brought over here when our ancestors were were first brought over here on slave ships in chains because that racism is largely frowned upon at least in terms of being overtly demonstrated because america is all about superficiality america is all about presentation america is all about looking good on the outside while rotting from the inside and so the racism against uh, now it's still out there in your face racism but and, 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 and what happened to our brother Amar Arbery is a testament to that. What happened to our dear brothers and sisters in Buffalo in the grocery store when they were shopping by that white young male supremacist is a testament to that. But by and large, that racism, again, for the sake of keeping up appearances, for the sake of perpetuating the illusion of inclusion, that outright explicit in your face racism is largely frowned upon. And when it's revealed publicly, people had to keep up the front of, we, we're we not about that. But what we got to understand is the politics of benign neglect. And I talk about that specifically in the video where I pose the question, is Bernie Sanders racist? And just to quickly sum it up, Benign neglect was a policy implicitly, not explicitly, but implicitly implemented by President Richard Nixon in the early 1970s, where it was a implicit but very intentional and deliberate thing and policy to ignore the plight of black people, to ignore the injustice that need to be that needed to be specifically addressed, corrected, and dealt with. And black people were fooled into going along with it due to a lot of propagandization as well as a lot of black leaders, so-called black leaders, selling us out. And so Bernie represents one architect of benign neglect in the context of racism, specifically against black people who have descended from U.S. chattel slaves. So check that video out for, for, for more insight into that. But there's another archetype. And it taps into something that our brother Malcolm X talked about when he talked about liberals versus conservatives. And in the modern construct, the conservatives are by and large Republicans and the liberal the liberals are by and large Democrats. And the point that Malcolm X said is that the, the conservatives are more overtly racist and rightfully perceived as racist by black folks, whereas the liberals have masqueraded the art of pretending to be friends to black people while still being racist against black people and undermining black people and black progress, just like the conservatives do. And we still see that dynamic today where the Republicans, we understand that they are anti-black by and large and in a fundamental way. And so we by and large don't vote for them. But the Democrats have fooled us into believing that they are for us, especially our elders and older blacks, even though younger blacks are more hip to it. And as a result, we vote against our best interests by voting for the Democrats and not getting anything in exchange for our vote in our immense political capital. And so... What they have done, even though Richard Nixon was a Republican president, the Democrats have certainly taken his concept of benign neglect and ran with it. And there's an, and there's an example of this in the context of the comedian, the multimillionaire comedian, Bill Maurer, Bill Maurer who uh, has a weekly show that comes on HBO real time with Bill Maurer. And he, in many ways, 
is the worst when it comes to racists against black people because he masquerades as an ally of black people. He masquerades as a friend of black people. He he masquerades as an advocate for black people when he's anything but. And a testament to that is something that he showed on his show. Now, he does it all the time because, for one, he props up blacks that speak out against racism that basically say racism is long, no longer a problem and that's a thing of the past now they may not say that overtly and explicitly but they say it implicitly it's the subtext of what they say so they'll say thing he props up blacks that promote that kind of stuff like everything is good racism doesn't exist it's no longer a problem and then anytime people speak out against institutional systematic racism against black people or he gets real offended he changed the subject or he pushes back against it anytime people talk about white privilege he pushes back on it takes it real personal gets real sensitive and yet he pretends to be an advocate for black people but a, a, a testament of this was something that he did on one of his shows that came on on june 10th 2022 when he was talking to the black scholar dr cornell west and Dr. Cornell West made the point that Biden hasn't done nothing for black people, even though we the ones that gave him the presidency. That's more of my words, but it's the truth. Empirically, it's undeniably the truth. But even though we black people gave Biden the presidency because his presidency and his presidential campaign was DOA into them black folks in South in the South Carolina primary, resurrected his campaign, and it was a lot of scheming behind the scenes that also uh, went into that. I talk about that too in a video where I, where I post question is Bernie Sanders racist, but he's given us nothing and done nothing for us and given us nothing but his butt to kiss. But Bill Maher said, of course, he pushed back on that and said, Biden has done a lot for black people. And so then he pulled some bullet points on screen that he presented as what Biden has done for black people. So this was premeditated. And I'm even, I'm, I'm even going to show this to you to show he actually, this is actually a screenshot. You might not be able to read the words, but I still want to show it to you to show, to show you this is something that he actually pulled up on screen. But if you notice the title and can read the title, it says what Biden has done for minorities. So even on the premise of the point he was making, what Biden has done for black people, it's not about black folks. It's about minorities. And minorities mean anything but straight white men. So that's the game that these Democrats in particular play where Double speak, duplicity, because even in the context of saying this is what he's done for black people, it's really not what he's done for black people. And HBO is a billion dollar company that's part of an even larger multi-billion dollar conglomerate. And these people couldn't even take the time or didn't even see the need to say what Biden has done for black folks. Hell, you could at least say what Biden has done for African-Americans, but no, what Biden has done for minorities. And yet he verbally said what well, not what Biden has done for black people. So that that's that shows you the epitome of benign neglect. Well, even in so-called addressing black issues and black specificity, hey, we going it's it, it ain't even about black folks, even in the very presentation that they provide. But let's go through some of these bullet points. Appoint the first one, appoint one of the most diverse cabinets in history. And once again, diversity means anything but straight white men. So what has that gotten us? Not a damn thing. Matter of fact, I think it's only it's only one black person I can think of in the cabinet, but what, what does it mean to have all throughout this history of this country and our oppression and our subjugation and our decimation, they've propped up our own to be the perpetrators of white supremacy against us. Black on the outside, white supremacists on the inside. So having a diverse cabinet, especially when that, that diversity don't necessarily even include black people, but even if it did include black people, that in itself don't mean nothing because let's be real, you'll be better off Having a cabinet, we will be better off having a cabinet of all straight white men who actually pass policy to benefit black people than having a cabinet full of nothing but black folks who undermine and sell out black people. It's about policy, not about the race. I mean, it's good to have black people if those black people can identify with you. And as coming from a similar background and lineage as you, they understand firsthand your plight and they address that plight but without that it don't mean nothing next bullet point first black asian american and fe female vice president that for one that's a mouthful and two and what does that d equate to us not a damn thing and this first black vice president said she ain't doing nothing specifically for black people now what other person of any other race especially a so-called minority would 
would, would have to say something like that. Most of them, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't say that. But who would even have to say something? Would a, would a Hispanic person have to say, man, I ain't going to do nothing for Hispanic people? Would a Jewish person say, man, I ain't going to do nothing for Jewish people? Would an Asian person say, hey, I ain't going to do nothing for Asian people? <laughs> okay. And it, it says something that the first and only black vice president wasn't a descendant of U.S. chattel slavery, just like the first and only black U.S. president wasn't a descendant of U.S. chattel slavery, which is a testament of how far we have yet to come as a country and in dealing with the crime and the sin of U.S. chattel slavery. Next thing, next bullet point, directed federal agencies to address the impacts of systematic racism on black communities and advanced racial equity. How? Where, where are the specific policies? That's just words. I mean, because the Democrats are slated to be facing a political bloodbath in the upcoming midterm elections this fall. And one of the reasons why is because even though black people have been the foundation of the Democrats, have been their firewall, we vote for them in a way higher percentage than any other race of people. But even a lot of black people are rightfully losing faith in Biden and the Democrats. And that's one of the reasons why they go, why they are slated and projected to be facing a political bloodbath in upcoming midterms this fall. So if they had any policies that specifically benefited black people, now would be the time to be shouting from a bull horn. It's just words. Next thing, extended the eviction moratorium that disproportionately helped black families remain in safe housing during COVID. Well, guess what? If you are disproportionately disadvantaged, any policy that helps a group of people is going to disproportionately help a subset within that group that's being that's been disproportionately disadvantaged because they disproportionately need more help. So the fact of the matter is that things for everybody disproportionately help. This one particular group is a testament to the fact that that, dis that group was disproportionately in need of help in the first damn place. So let's get to the reasons and the cause of us being dis disproportionately disadvantaged and disproportionately in need of help to begin with. Next uh, bullet point. Executive order to improve educational opportunities for black people. What? That's probably one of them policies that benefit... I don't even know if it's a policy because they just be saying words. But to, if they could point to something specific, it's probably something to benefit everybody. They say, well, black people included in this everybody thing or benefit all minorities. And black people included in this minority thing. Okay. Now, that's the first page. Like I said, it was two screenshots of stuff. So this is the second one. Again, once again, if you read it, what Biden has done for minorities. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. But what Biden has done for minorities and he presented it as what Biden has done for blacks. DOJ banned the use of chokeholds by federal law enforcement. That is the epitomization of what it is to be a bottom caste. I mean, banning the use of chokeholds is just a minimum above legalized police brutality and barbarism. And so the fact that they even had to ban the use of chokeholds by federal law enforcement is a reflection of the state of federal law enforcement, but the fact that that is a victory for black people is what it means to be a bottom caste. That common sense laws, common sense practices that rightfully benefit everybody is a victory for your group because it's a testament to how that has been imposed on your group. Next thing, DOJ sued Georgia over discriminatory voting laws. Now the Republicans have been horrible and terrible about pushing discriminatory policies against black, largely against black folks to stop them from voting because they are by and large going to vote for Democrats. But the only reason the Democrats give a damn is because they know that these black people are people that's going to vote for them for doing nothing. So it's not, even though they might be on the right side of this, voting is a fundamental right of a democracy and to the extent that people push back, rightfully push back against discriminatory voting laws, that's that's a basic function of us actually having a functional democracy. So to the standard benefits black people, once again, it's a testament to the games being played and being run on us that something like this even needs to be done and it disproportionately impacts us because once again, we're being disproportionately disadvantaged. But it ain't like the Democrats really care about us. They just want us to vote for them for doing nothing because, okay, you can do this, but how can you have such a problem advocating for reparations? How can you have such a problem doing specific policies to benefit black people? But of course you're going to do the one thing that's going to benefit you. 
Next thing, next bullet point, infrastructure plan. He's talking about the infrastructure plan that Biden passed that's going to allocate billions of dollars to the state, to the, to the states. Now, here in Illinois, we are advocating for the 1619 Rapid Relief Executive Order. We are advocating our multi-billionaire Democratic governor, J.B. Prisker, who inherited all this money, who we call J.B. I wouldn't be governor without the black vote. Prisca. And one of the things that we are advocating for is that a specific percentage of the infrastructure money at least commiserate with our percentage of the po population and accounting for our disproportionate need that that is provided to black people and black businesses and black communities in ways that reconstruct our economies and recycle money within the black community. Now, if it's done that way, it will benefit black people, and we should be advocating for that as black people all across this nation. But as the infrastructure plan stands now, like with everything else, we probably are not going to get our fair share of those funds. And to the extent that it's a, of any benefit, it's going, once again, general benefit. Okay, maybe to, right, maybe to hopefully build up some of the highways and repair some of the highways across this nation that we need to be, that need to be repaired. And basically, hey, Negro, we repair the highways, so when you drive Uber in order to survive, hey, at least you have good highways to drive on. Next thing, cash relief program cut black child by 40%. Wait, hold on. Cash relief program cut black child poverty by 40%. Has anybody noticed a, a cut in, in black child poverty? Anybody who lives amongst and around or at least sees impoverished black children, have you noticed any cuts in black child poverty? But I think he's talking about the money that was provided during the heart of COVID, like with the uh, relief, such as the unemployment plus up the extra unemployment money they paid, as well as the child tax tax credit. What why did they pay like three hundred a month or something like that? Well, that money has been phased out. That money is no longer being provided. So to the extent that it cut child poverty, if it did at all, that might, that's something of the past. That's something no longer being provided. But that's still considered a victory, even though it's no longer in existence. Establish Juneteenth as a federal holiday. That's a good thing, and that's something that should have been done. But once, but but we can't eat Juneteenth. We can't spend Juneteenth. We can't sleep inside Juneteenth. And so, yeah, that's something that should have been done. But we need economic policy. We need something beyond just a federal holiday. <laughs> Nominated first black woman to the Supreme Court. More symbolism. If having a black support, if having a black Supreme Court justice meant anything for black people, then based on having Clarence Thomas in the Supreme Court all these decades, hell, we would have reparations by now. And I think they specifically elected this black woman because they knew she wasn't going to do nothing for black people. Last thing, executive order to hold officers accountable for police misconduct. Same thing as before. Basic, fundamental Police policies that are just a bare minimum to be above legalized police brutality, that's considered a victory for black for, for, for black folks. In other words, all of us should be accountable for misconduct. And of course, police who have the sacred duty of serving and protect the sacred duty of being the enforcement of our laws, them being accountable for misconduct is a victory for black folks. In other words, police doing the bare minimum of their job, the bare minimum the bare minimum of any civilized society where you don't have legally sanctioned police brutality, them doing that and, be, and being held accountable for that is a victory for black people. And the fact that that's even perceived as a victory for black folks is a testament to how we've been disproportionately brutalized and subjected to police misconduct. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to shut this down, but think about that because that's very educational. In terms of it really shows what it is to be a bottom cast and it shows the epitome of benign neglect when it comes to black people who have descended from U.S. chattel slaves. And it also is a reflection of how unless we demand it, these Democrats, even though we vote them in office time and time and time and time again, aren't going to do a damn thing for us because the things that they consider as being done for us aren't even for us. As you can see evidence by the things i just shared so anthony more for your money more like subscribe comment click the notif click that notification bell click click the links in the description box peace